maybe like three years ago, I got this giant excuse for a suitcase. It is the media site from Sonic Foundry. And um, as best I could figure, it's from like 2008 or something. The reason I got it, and it was really cheap on eBay, is, well, the reason I actually bothered to get it. But the front of it is a monitor, and then the insides of it are apparently just a computer, some kind of PC, PC compatible. I think, like, probably like a Pentium 4, because, like I said, it's from like 2008, maybe even earlier. Yeah, and then the other side, it's got power and a DVD CD drive. The idea behind this was to record, like, live streams similar to this one before they had tiny little devices to it for that, but it was more geared towards like corporate and uh, universities and shit like that. I had to look it up online because I wasn't really sure. Uh, this is not how much I paid for it. This is just a similar example because I wanted to show you that the front of it should actually look like this, which is what the back of it looks like. And it's missing the uh, cover. And there was not too much information about it, so I had to go through the Wayback Machine. And this is basically what the site looked like in 2008 and there you can see a device looks very similar to this one um, any newer than that like 2010 2012 it was a newer looking model although the model number isn't really shown here so it's not I'm not 100% certain exactly what the difference might be there was however a PDF which is for some reason scaled really stupidly right now which talks about this It's the ML recorder and it doesn't get too deep into specs but uh, 1280 by 1024 graphics AGP, which means it's uh, definitely quite old. Uh, Microsoft Windows XP embedded, yeah, also quite old. So that's 22 pounds. It doesn't feel like that, but maybe I'm getting stronger. Maybe it's because missing the front cover. And an earth-shattering 160 gigabyte hard drive to store 1,000 hours of content, which in a very ro low resolution, I'd imagine, with shitty compression. So there's a bunch of these for sale on eBay. Like this one's like 80 bucks. I got this probably for 40 bucks. One caveat is that it was sold for parts are not working. And I was more interested in the chassis, the shell of it. Like this, this example here, $535. Now, some of that might be for the software, basically, because this is supposed to come with video capture and streaming software. It turns out this one, not so much. And I'll show you that uh, right now. Yeah, no bootable device. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if this doesn't actually have a hard drive in it. I mean, I, I can't hear it. hard drive spinning, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, so anyway, I want to open this up, see what's inside of it, and see if it's upgradable, because I pretty much like the form factor of this. Like, it's a cool case. And uh, it's just a standard LCD monitor, which incidentally uses a VGA input, which is this thing here. Like, this is basically just a bridge between the VGA output on the motherboard and presumably the VGA input for the monitor. So if I disconnect this, it would disconnect the front monitor and I could pipe this out to a computer, I mean, to a different monitor or pipe any computer into the monitor built into this thing. So theoretically, this case would be upgradable to a newer motherboard if it would fit physically in the chassis. And another problem or potential issue is the card slots are vertical in this, which means you need some kind of um, card adapter to come from the PCI or in the modern motherboard PCIe slots into uh, this orientation. It would need to line up perfectly. So that might be tricky. But then again, nowadays, I mean, it would still be useful with just USB ports, USB 3 or even um, Thunderbolt. So, yeah, anyway, uh, let me open this up and we'll see what's inside and see if it's any good. So it looks like it should be pretty easy to take apart. There's four screws in each of these four corners and then a couple by the handle, which would presumably have to come out to open this thing up. Oh, one thing I want to show you before I do that. Another cool aspect of this is the, uh, is the feet, because it just stands up like this, but then you can actually articulate it like that, which I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. And it actually uh, balances pretty well, even though there's nothing behind it other than these like little feet sticking out this is probably one of those things that was definitely not user serviceable or meant to, and it, is this stripping what is going on with this it feels weird or not meant to be opened under any circumstances lest you avoid the warranty but considering this thing's warranty probably expired 12 years ago i'm not too concerned all right let's see what the deal is so this is coming off on this side quite nicely uh 
No, those screws, those screws are definitely gonna have to come out. What the fuck? Oh, I see what happened. I'll have to show you this when I get it open because you can't really. There's no way you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but basically, the screws go into these uh, brass-looking threads, and obviously that um, brass piece is just pressed into the plastic, and I think it's coming out with the screws. Is the problem? It kind of lost its grip on the plastic, either because this has faced some kind of trauma or just because of age. That should mean I can pry this apart. Um, hmm. I'll be right back. I gotta get a prying dealie. All right, so let me see if I can just sort of leverage this open. We got a nice crack developing here. Hmm. Well, brute force works. Yeah, so now we can see... Oh, I actually broke the plastic. That's cool. Here we go. This is one of the uh, brass studs that's supposed to be in the plastic. And you, so you can see, like, the screw... Kind of got to flip this around awkwardly, but... That is the screw. And then right on the other side of that is that brass stud, which is threaded the inside and sort of knurled on the outside to bite into the plastic. But, uh, not quite knurled enough, I would say. Not the biggest disaster in the world, I guess, because, in theory, this case is still salvageable. I could either repair that, or, between these two, um, screws, this screw and the other two down here, like, really, it should hold well enough, even without this corner being secured. So, I'm not too worried about that. Take the handle off, I guess. Off of this glorified briefcase. So, inside... This is kind of cool. It's just a sort of metal computer chassis. Which is attached or is not attached. It's not attached. Now, I just got to be careful because on the other side of this is an LCD panel. And I don't want to end up smacking that around. Okay. So now, actually, let me leave that there for a sec. One thing notable about this assembly is that it has a sort of rubbery gasket around the whole edge. It's actually uh, very malleable. And so the unit sat with its face on this gasket. And then there's gaskets around the side too. So I think it was just basically suspended in between these two halves, rubbing on the gasket, which uh, seals around the front of the screen. So like if uh, this is like this, the screen just drops on here and touches the gasket on all sides. And incidentally, on the other piece, on the back half of it, there's also a big, uh, I wouldn't even call this a gasket, this is like a big piece of foam. So I guess it sort of shockproof the case a little bit, because obviously this uh, thing wasn't screwed into the case in any way. It just sort of floated in there. So that's kind of cool. And one more screw down the bottom here. Ooh, that had a bunch of like weird compound that just flaked off in like powder form. Okay, let's see what this reveals. Do this carefully because there's undoubtedly wiring behind this, which there is. It's got these, uh, this ribbon cable, this other set of wires back here, and what looks like my glimpse of it was a power connector. This actually affords a slightly better view of the ports on this side of it. You can see it looks like an average computer. Um, you got two uh, card slots, audio, network, USB, the monitor out and in and a parallel port which kind of describes the age of this unit and uh ps2 keyboard and mouse and what is that uh and a video out port huh so that's to be explored so this is another vga port which i didn't realize but as i said this is the thing that uh connects the motherboard to the monitor to the built-in monitor the side of the case actually includes controls uh for menu, down, uh, decrease, increase, and source. The type of controls you'd find on the side of most any LCD monitor, although the names of them are a little weird there, but purposes are the same. And then it looks like the ribbon cable is going to a little daughter board, which has the video out on it, which I will show you in detail once I get this thing off. So this group of wires is the most tenuous so i'm just going to pull that out that just has 
I don't know what kind of connector this is. It's an inline connector of some kind. Very small. It's a common sort of connector. I just don't know what it's called. I'll show it to you up close in a minute. And then this ribbon cable. Oh, it just pulls out. Okay, it's another inline sort of connector. Black instead of white this time. It looks like a giant version of the white connector. And then finally, there is this gray cable, which is power. And I know that because it is going to this Molex power connector. So that's kind of cool. The monitor is drawing probably, yeah, it's drawing 12 volts from the regular computer PSU. And you can tell it's 12 volts because the yellow wire is 12 volts and it's hitting the yellow and the common on that side. And uh, this doesn't look like anything terribly crazy. LCD module, if you want to note the model number and look it up, I might look it up later, but Samsung LCD panel used. Does that mean Samsung LCD panel is used in here, or does that mean Samsung LCD panel that has been used and refurbished? I'm guessing it just means used in here. So Samsung made the panel. I'm wondering uh, how much of this is custom. But I'm guessing the uh, board driving the panel under here is probably pretty standard. I'm less interested in the intricacies and inner workings of the panel itself than of the computer. First, let's check out some specs. As one would expect, it has RAM and DDR2 512 megs, a PC5300. So it has a gig of RAM because it's got two of these. I'm assuming this one's the same capacity. Yeah, they're identical. So a full exciting gigabyte of RAM, which when this came out, to be fair, was probably a decent amount of RAM. The next thing I want to check out is the CPU. If I can get this shroud off. How's this shroud attached? I think, oh, it's Velcroed. Oh, no, it's just stuck on there. It just sounded like Velcro. Okay. Oh, no, it is. Uh, my bad. It is Velcro, actually. It's just the adhesive happened to come off the case before the Velcro ripped open. Interesting. So, you can see that shroud sort of covered these two fans. So, we could draw air right across the heat sink for the CPU out the back of the case. And they're very low profile, very small fans. I think I cut my hand on this heat sink. It is very thin aluminum. I mean, very thin, like. All right, let's take the heat sink off. And for that, I need another hex head driver. Hopefully it's the same size that I used to open the case. It is not. Oh good, a whole bunch of heat sink compound. But yeah, it's basically immaculate in here. Um, not a speck of dust, not even on the fans, not even on the heatsink fins. Very clean. Wow. Oh, that is hard to read. It is the very gently laser etched model number and everything. Oh, it's actually a Core 2 Duo. Newer than I thought. Not exactly new, but newer. 1.86 gigahertz. What is that? 866 megahertz front side bus? You can see the PCI slots. And fortunately, like I said, PCI, not PCIe. What do you expect on a computer this age? So you can see on the side here, very small holes to get the screwdriver in to hit the screws at the top of these expansion cards. Now what is this, a PCI X card? Shoved into a standard PCI. Oh my god, they're zip tied in. They are zip tied in. I did not see that. That's a very unusual arrangement. Um, I've never seen this type of thing before, but I guess because this is meant to be moved around, obviously it has a carrying handle and everything. It sort of has a zip tie that goes from the corner of the card here, under the card, and then right out through there. You can just see it over my finger, and then comes out of this uh, riser to there. I know it's a little dark in the case, but let me pop that off. So, yeah, that was sort of capturing the card at that end. Just a wise move. I mean, like I said, I've never seen it before, but smart if this is going to be bounced around and move from place to place. The Viewcast Corporation. Okay. Now, this has a 15-pin, uh, well, DB15 connector, male, obviously. Actually, it may not be obvious because it's like kind of bad lighting, but. And this was marked on the chassis, I believe. It's marked audio video cap 
all oh wow mirror image um audio video capture so yeah presumably that's uh vga i don't know if it's a vga input it might just be a connector for a breakout so you could have multiple uh like composite lines coming into this because this was kind of before the days of hd so this is probably a relatively i, I was not custom card but a relatively uh specialized card and then below that and just by looking at the outside of it this one is labeled vga capture it's a db15 female and this one is labeled do not use and has a port cover on it these screws are like not typical computer case screws like they're very meaty and they also have some kind of thread lock compound on them uh it's like again like white goopy stuff it almost looks like pipe dope or something strange this is from Data Path Limited is the manufacturer, or at least the company for whom it was manufactured. Copyright 2002. This is an old card. Um, since on the case it was labeled VGA Capture, I'm guessing it's a, well, VGA Capture card. So this port with the two screws on either side had this plastic cover over it, which I just ripped off when I removed the card. So it was basically like that. And that was labeled do not use. I don't know what the purpose of that connector is, but hopefully I can find some data on this card and figure that out. And presumably this empty port would have been for the actual VGA capture. From the looks of it, there should be... This is an analog devices AD9884A chip. And it looks like there's a position for a second one here. And this is labeled iChips IP00C712. And presumably there'll be another one there. So I'm guessing if both these ports were active, they could capture two signals at the same time using a non-existent, well, the non-existent chip there and the non-existent chip there, which would be duplicates of this one and this one. That's my guess. What goes in this slot, I have no idea. And I guess it only captures VGA and not audio. There are some headers on the end here, but they're not hooked up to anything on the inside of this case. So I'm not 100% sure on that one. So here we have some usual stuff. This is a cable going to the DVD ROM drive. And they've done us the favor of gluing it in there or taping it in there. So this is the IDE cable for the ROM drive. And in the corners, it's got little bits of what looks like glue. And it does not quite want to come out. Not that it's essential to get it out. I mean, it's an IDE cable. It's not the most interesting thing in the world, but this might just be hot glue. It's just if it actually penetrated in between the male and female connectors, that might... Oh, nope. So, yeah, standard ID connector. This looks like a pretty typical motherboard. I mean, I'm sure this was an off-the-shelf thing and definitely... Well, not definitely, but almost definitely not custom-made for this company. The interesting thing is on that PDF data sheet, it said AGP graphics. This has an AGP slot here under this wiring loom but there's nothing connected to it so unless the onboard graphics are agp but yeah i guess that's that's perfectly reasonable to assume although my question would be can you have an agp slot on the motherboard if the onboard graphics are also using an agp bus because so i thought you could only have one agp slot per machine but i could be misremembering that now the riser card is interesting in that it is definitely like custom made for this case. It's got a ribbon cable coming from this PCI slot up to the riser card which then feeds two PCI slots. And then we additionally have, can I take this out? I probably can, it's also glued in on the corners. We have an additional like little card header with a very small ribbon cable going to this PCI slot. Ah, there we go. And as you can see, it only has a very few number of pins present. In fact, on this side, it's only got four pins. And on this side, three, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, a total of 14 pins connected. And it looks like 14 uh, wires on this ribbon cable. Not sure what the purpose of any of those pins are, obviously offhand, but those are also wired into the 
the riser card, and they all go up to the second PCI slot. Now, as for the riser card itself, let's see if I can... Oh! This board actually does have a single... Well, that is a PCI slot. That's not AGP. I keep thinking there's a Pentium 4. So this uh, riser card is held in by a screw there and a screw down there, which I've already removed. There we go. So now this whole assembly has come out. And that is about... Ooh, shit. Just dropped a screw into the motherboard. But no matter, this motherboard is not really useful anymore. That's actually not true. I mean, a, a Core 2 Duo would still be useful as a router or audio streaming device, any number of things. Um, old computers can still have some life left in them for very specialized purposes. Unfortunately for video streaming and video recording, this motherboard is pretty much past its prime. I, don't, I really doubt it could handle full HD like uh, H.264 encoding, but on the fly. And by doubt, I mean it, you know, can't. So this is the ribbon cable that feeds those two PCI slots from the first PCI slot here on the board. This is the smaller of the two that went into the second PCI slot, and thusly. So yeah, under here, I'm. this was partially covered. I'm an idiot. This is not an AGP slot. This is presumably a an X16, 16 lane PCIe slot, and this is a one lane PCIe slot. So it's kind of a shame that these cards are PCI, because if they were specialized and they had some kind of cool functionality, you know, they might still have some kind of use nowadays. Like, if, it, if one of these cards could capture a VGA signal, that would be kind of cool, because that's actually not that common to find. And the other thing I find interesting here is this daughter board, because this is not standard. This is probably something relatively custom for this case and this manufacturer. And what that daughter, what that daughter board has on it are these two connectors up here. In fact, let me take this off so you can more easily see what I'm talking about. Dun, da, da, da. Presenting. This thing. Aha. There it is. This is just a VGA pass-through, male to male. And it's a custom PCB. It's just a straight-through PCB. There's no circuitry or anything on this. Uh, but custom made to fit the exact dimensions of this case where it's passing the VGA out from the motherboard, that's the blue connector there, up to monitor in, which is right there. It's going to be a little out of focus, but at least you can see the positioning of the ports. So that's the onboard VGA, and that's the monitor in. It's basically the same as having a patch cable from the computer to the monitor. That's that's all it is. Now, the monitor in port that that connected to is on this daughter board, and this daughter board had a pin header that I early, earlier disconnected from the monitor. So I don't know if that's passed through or if there's any active circuitry between those two, but the interesting thing is there are actually two VGA connectors on here. And again, sorry for out of focus, but the other one is video out. So I'm guessing maybe this acts like a splitter, in essence, allowing the VGA signals come from the motherboard, go to the built-in monitor, and then also to an external monitor, potentially. This also drives the sound, interestingly enough. So it's pro ah, I don't think it drives it necessarily. It might also just be a pass-through, because I think this connector here is going to be the motherboard, uh, the integrated sound card output. Sorry, I'm just looking at this closer to my face to see if it's labeled on the board. Yep, it says audio. So this is the audio out from the built-in chipset, which presumably would be the same thing coming out of these port, out of the, uh, well, in and out of these ports. And I think this is just stereo audio out because it go goes up to this daughter board. And then from the daughter board, it eventually makes its way over to this connector, which goes to this speaker in the front. And then this connector, which goes all the way around to a speaker all the way on the other side of the unit. And incidentally, those speakers line up with these uh, holes on each side of the monitor. 
And then this connector is power coming from the standard ATX PSU to the daughter board. And then more mysteriously, there is yet another VGA connector, at least it's a DV15 female, sitting right here on the end of the daughter board. And I don't know what's supposed to connect to that. There was nothing originally connected to that when I took this apart. So it appears as if there's almost uh, one VGA in and then two VGA outs plus the monitor out. I don't know. Is it a three-way splitter? Unclear. And these are very similar. In fact, I think they're the same as like the uh, CD-ROM audio connectors from times of yore. And then this, I misspoke before, is actually one connector that goes out to both speakers. Stereo pair. Now this daughter board, I believe, best I can tell, is just held on by the uh, retainer screws on each on these two connectors on these two uh, DB15 females, and I see no. I'm not gonna sure. I'm not gonna remove the daughter board because there's nothing to observe underneath it. There's no chips, no connectors, no nothing. And the only thing below that are the standard uh, P4 type power connector and the back of all the motherboard headers, the kind you see in any. Uh, ATX style motherboard. I do want to investigate this daughter board a little bit. I'm calling it a daughter board. It's not really a daughter board because it's not like connected to the main board in any substantial way. But I didn't really know what else to call it. Ah, I see a clue. There are two, four, six, eight jumpers here. I'm wondering if those jumpers will change the signal from coming out this internal VGA port to the external VGA port. Yeah, it looks like, I, I can't see all the traces because it's a double-sided board, and that might be a good reason to remove this, but a, a lot of the traces from, yeah, a lot of the traces from these, um, oh my god, from these jumpers. Wow, I just lost the word for jumpers. From this set of jumpers goes to this VGA connector. And I would assume the other side, oh yeah, it's much more obvious. The other side of this set of jumpers goes to this VGA connector right here. Which is the one labeled monitor in? Oh, okay. So, I w okay. So this one's labeled monitor in. So apparently it can take the monitor in internally. That's what it's for. So you have monitor in here. And if you change all these jumpers to the other positions, monitor in would be here. That appears to be what the deal with that is. Otherwise, there's not much in the way of labeling. It says assembly 2150355-box. I have a feeling this part's not going to be easy to look up online because it's probably custom made for this purpose. There is the hard drive. It is, as per the spec sheet there, it's upside down, uh, but it's 160 gigabytes. It's a Seagate. I'm presuming, yeah, it's 7200 RPM. And it is a SATA drive, as you can see from the cable. Not very, uh, not a very fancy mounting situation here. You can see the SATA cable is just sort of coming out of the motherboard's uh, SATA header, which is actually at a weird angle because it's sort of stuffed in there and jammed in uh, sideways. And then it's just coiled up here going right into the hard drive. And the power connector is interestingly, these four wires here are the uh, power connector for the SATA, uh, blah, 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 for the SATA power output to the drive. And they're just kind of looped under the motherboard and then back to this connector. So, yeah, it's very uh, tightly fit in there. And it's almost, I don't know. I mean, I guess this is a reasonable enough way to do it. I don't know. I was going to make fun of them, but I mean, like, it crammed our hard drive in there nicely enough. And if we flip it over, I'm presuming these two screws are going into the bottom of the hard drive. Yeah, they are. The only reason I'm second guessing pulling the hard drive out is because of that connector sort of being jammed partially underneath the motherboard. Is I'm not sure if I have to take the whole motherboard out to get that drive out, but there is one surefire way to find out if that's the case, and that is to take off these two screws. Okay. Now, why did that hard drive not even budge? Is that not what's holding it in there? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> There's two more screws on the side of the case. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping not to damage the uh, the board and the pin. 
And yeah, I mean, I'm guessing it's for cost purposes because if they, the more, um, you know, standardized parts they can use, the better for them. But in this case, it makes it kind of a sloppy way of doing it, to say the least. Ah, come on. Like I said, I want to try to maneuver this out without damaging the motherboard. I don't really care about the power connector so much. And I certainly don't care about this hard drive because it wouldn't even boot to it. I'm guessing the drive's dead. I mean, it's got to be 10, 12 years old. I initially guessed 12. It might be more like 10 since this is a Core 2 Duo. There is a date code, 07416. I think that might be 2007 and then the 41st week in the sixth hour. I'm not sure how Seagate does their uh, date codes. But then again, it doesn't really matter because it's a... 160 gigabyte hard drive, which is, you know, pretty much useless in this day and age. Like I said, older computers like, you know, motherboard, CPU, RAM still be useful. I have uh, some fairly underpowered computers as my primary routers because for routing, especially internet traffic, like, you know, on a non data center level, um, it's more than enough, even with VPNs running off that's those same computers. Barely uses any CPU even at peak, but uh, hard drives are just so shitty compared to SSDs. They're veritably useless in situations like this. I mean, obviously for storage density and price, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say density, but more like for price, you know, a 12 terabyte hard drive is relatively affordable. A 12 terabyte SSD would be comically unaffordable. I mean, I think there are like hundred terabyte SSDs for the data center um, for data center type use but this uh, ROM drive is relatively remarkable because it's obviously a laptop style slimline ROM drive and they put a uh, header on the back of it or an adapter so it takes a standard like floppy drive four pin Molex E connector technically I don't know if this is Molex but that's what I've always called it, and uh, an ID header, and plenty of copper shielding around here, like wrapped all the way around the inside. I mean, that's that's a touch of class. I like that. And then under that is, of course, the power supply, which you can see on the back here. It's got two fans, power input, and a switch next to it, which is not the switch for the power supply itself. The switch is attached to uh, this cable, which then goes down to the motherboard, which is presumably the power switch connector for the motherboard. I mean, what else would it be? All right, well, I'm more or less torn this down to my satisfaction. The goal of this was more curiosity than anything. Um, obviously, this motherboard, as I said, is not very useful to me nowadays, especially not in this form factor. And my goal would be ultimately to replace this with a newer motherboard, not necessarily something brand new, but something newer because I would love to use this as some kind of like video capture device or video storage device, uh, portable, obviously more for fun. I don't really need such a thing, but it would be a neat project to put together. Um, I should have an old motherboard lying around that I could theoretically use for it. The main thing I'm going to run into as far as problems go is some kind of riser card for PCIe slots that would line up with the card slot connectors or the card slots, uh, ports on the back that's going to be the tricky part of it. As far as the built-in monitor goes, that's obviously has to be driven by a VGA because this does not have any kind of HDMI or DVI interface that I'm aware of on it, which is unfortunate, of course, because analog video is not the best video. And then it also begs the question of how to pipe that in. I would have to hope that any motherboard I put in here would have the VGA connector on board and have to be an old enough motherboard to have a VGA connector in the first place have it line up properly to hit that. Otherwise, I guess I could use a short jumper cable and sort of have it sticking out the back. Not the neatest solution, but anyway, these are all considerations for the future. If and when I decide to eventually repurpose this case. Um, I do like the case. I do like the form factor with its built in monitor. It's very cool. This turns out to be a, a fairly well made piece of kit. Um, they clearly put a lot of care and design into it and made it uh, very stable internally with a but with all their thread locked screws and weird zip ties. That is it for now. Um, A star, thanks for watching again.
I bid you good night. And uh, if you're watching this recording, thanks for sticking with me. And uh, again, check out my website, s.co.tt. This is Scott.extras, my extras channel, because uh, that's where I'm putting these live streams so I kind of get the hang of it. That was a long sign-off. Good night.